What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of The Circle Pit. This is your host, the God of Thunder, and we are back with episode 11. Just a couple new things in the metal community today. Five Finger Death Punch released a new single. The song is called Fake. And if you are a classic Five Finger Death Punch fan like I am, you are not going to be disappointed with this because they went right back to their roots. Sounds just like a song that came off of The Way of the Fist. I am very excited for this next album, and I can't wait to see what Five Finger Death Punch has in store for us. And in other news, the band Ghost just announced their new singer, Cardinal Copia. Yes, that's right, Cardinal Copia. Papa Emeritus is no more. Um, there's no more bloodline between Papa and anyone else. Instead, there's Cardinal Copia, and... He's the new prodigy to Papa Null. Cardinal Copia is a lot younger, and I feel like he's going to really put on an energetic show. It's going to be interesting seeing him live now because, you know, like me and the rest of the fans are all used to seeing Papa Emeritus in his satanic pope robe. It's gonna, I'm, really, I'm really interested to see where this is going to go. Um... We're still waiting on a new song or even like news on a new album from them, but they are set to hit the road in May, so we should be hearing something soon. Last week on the show, we had members from Crude and Rude on. I know I didn't really do much of an intro for them, and I apologize for that. I was just so busy last week and just really had no time to do anything. Um, But I'm going to play you guys a song right now. This song is from their album, Fall to Hell. It honestly kind of reminds me a little bit of Judas Priest. So here it is. Let me know what you guys think. This song is called Animal Man. Enjoy. The beast inside remains at bay. Lust churning scent is near To quench the light in appetites As I lie Tossing and turning In the night My maniacal mind Stokes the fire Yearning and craving
right. Thank you guys from Crude and Rude so much for doing that interview. Can't wait to have you guys back on the show. Make sure you go check out their album, Fall to Hell, and to check out their show on April 28th with Deadweight Burden and the Soul Source Side Project in Danbury, Connecticut at Billy Beans. All right, now it is time for the moment I've been waiting for. If you guys know me, you know I'm a huge fan of the Swedish power metal band Sabaton. Well, last week, I had a phone interview with Thobe England, the former guitarist of the band, and this is how it went. Check it out and let me know what you guys think. I still got a huge smile on my face from this interview. Hey, Sean. Hey, Thobe, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, sure. No problem. Um, well, to start off, how long have you been playing guitar? Well, that's a long time, I guess. Um, since I was about eight, some, eight, nine. Wow. So it's about 30 years now. And um, what made you, what made you or who inspired you to pick up the guitar? I guess it was, you know, first I, I got a, a small keyboard when I was about seven or something, and um, but I didn't find that, you know, that cool, you know. So I, I guess it was um, a lot of, you know, the 80s uh, metal bands like Twisted Sister, Kiss, and Bon Jovi and stuff like that, and Deep Purple that really got me into actually the electric guitar and, and like, wow, this is cool. This is what it's all about, you know. That's so awesome. So, before joining Sabaton, were you familiar with the band? Uh, I wasn't that familiar with the band. I've heard about, uh, I've heard the name before, mm-hmm. because this was at a time in my life where I, I wasn't really that interested in, in other bands or, or looking up new bands to listen to. So, I, but I kind of knew that they were, it was a Swedish band and they came from from where I'm living now, um, and uh, well, that was pretty much it. What I knew about them, and yeah, uh, of course, uh, I looked them up uh, as I got the offer, of course, and, and then I was like, "Wow, this is really fucking cool," you know. So both you and Chris joined Sabaton in 2012, and did you know Chris beforehand? No, I didn't. Uh, uh, it's pretty funny because we're both from from up north, you know, uh, the very northern part of Sweden. And uh, he, he knew uh, who I was because I, I, I'm like ten years older or something, and I've been in other bands before. I didn't know who he was uh, yeah. until 2012, basically. Wow. And you two replaced the original guitarists. Yeah. So. Did you like personally feel any kind of pressure, fi- like filling in those shoes? Uh, well, no, not to be uh, to be honest. I, I never felt uh, a pressure musically uh, uh, because I was kind of self confident enough. Uh, you know, coming from where I come from, it's like I've, I've been practicing so much, and I, I knew that I was. Up, up to par, you know, it was yeah. never going to be a problem about that, but uh, the, the the thing that got me and both me and Chris nervous in the beginning was the, you know, how the fans would react to us, yeah. and uh, so that was more, more more the part we were a bit nervous about, but it turned out very well, actually, everything kind of fell in place, and to, to this day uh, we've never heard anything negative from a, not a single fan. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty f- amazing, actually. Yeah. Now, you guys are my favorite. Like, I've seen Tommy play now three times, yeah. and he's a great guitarist. Like, he's fin- yeah, he was a he's great, really great. He was a great choice, like, to replace you. But um, I saw you in 2014 when you were on your Amon and Marth tour in New York oh. City. Yeah. And you just, you blew me away. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Well, I guess I, I have a, a little bit a, a different approach to, to guitar playing maybe than Tommy in, in the sense that I'm I'm a bit more old school, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I never rely totally on technique and stuff like that. And, you know, I never play the same exact solo every night. It's like, you know, 
I love the, the, the inspiration and the, you know, I, I like to improvise a lot. So I guess that's where we are a bit different, I think. Yeah. Um, how was it learning the new songs? Like, how was it learning the old Sabaton songs compared to, like, the new ones that you were familiar with already? Uh, you mean the, the, when we came into the band? Yeah, like in 2012. So there were already a couple albums out. How was it yeah. learning those songs? It was pretty cool, actually, because, you know, it was so funny because, um, you know, I come from this power metal background, so to speak. Uh, I have my, my my first band was called Winterlong, and we did power metal and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there was pretty close actually musically to Sabaton yeah so it was like okay uh, if I forget what comes next um, I, I just go with the instinct basically because what I discovered along the way was that me and Joachim Joachim wrote uh, basically all the music up until uh, we came into the band um, with I discovered that we think the same about compositions and stuff you know composing the songs and mm, we have the same influences like rainbow judas priest man or malmsteen and so it was pretty cool to discover how close we were in that sense yeah how um so you now have three solo albums out correct well that depends on how you look at it i if i, I turn around here i'm sitting in the studio i think i'm I've um, the first one came out in 2001. My band was called Winterlong. Yeah. Second one, 2002, and then so I think I released five albums with Winterlong, and then I released my first solo album in 2007 called Influences, and then it was I think I had a break with my solo stuff until From the Wilderness and then of course Before the Storm sold my soul and now The Draining of Urgel so it's like it's been a shitload of albums actually yeah yeah so the, I guess the most recent ones are from what 2016 on yeah uh, then, 15 uh, okay, yeah. From the Wilderness and so that that's kind of the, the new new start the new era or something mm -hmm. like that can you tell me a little about your new album, Draining of Vergomir, that came out a little over a month ago? Yeah, uh, I decided this time to focus a lot more on my guitar. Yes, guitar solos, a lot of them, and, you know, uh, since I have a lot more time now to focus basically on, on my guitar, on songwriting, which I didn't have when I was in Sabaton because we were obviously on the road all the time. Yeah. I've kind of mm, really, it's like a, something cool going on between me and the guitar once again. I feel like I'm 15 <laughs> again <laughs> in the relationship to my guitar. So it's like I wanted to focus more on guitar playing on this album and like, yeah, all yeah. in and uh, a little bit more going forward uh, so my soul was pretty much going backwards a bit to let's say the late 70s early 80s metal genre you know yeah i definitely got that and vibe it, from that album yeah exactly a little bit more scaled back and i didn't i didn't uh, do that much guitar soloing at all i, I deliberately kind of held back a little bit to focus more on the sound and the songs but on this album it was like yeah let's go all in you know yeah uh, what's your favorite song to play off of that album uh, I would say it's uh, I would say it's uh, the king Viking mm -hmm. it's a really aggressive and <laughs> heavy song to play yeah out of all your solo albums which one's your personal favorite I would say it's it burns. How come? I don't know. It's something. It's like the deep purple rainbow vibe that that's going on. Yeah. And when we're up there live, and the whole band, you know, we we don't use kick tracks or or fake keyboards or choirs or anything like that. No overdubs. 
So once we're up on stage, everybody's in perfect, you know, sync with each other. And I mean, that song, it, it, it's a little bit special to me. Yeah. I know Joachim was on, he was a guest on one of the songs on your album. And is, is Chris still making your album covers? Yep, absolutely. He's the man for that. He's been making my uh, album covers since 2015. The first one was from the wilderness. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, and he's uh, he's getting better and better. It's insane. I think he's working with Nuclear Blast now. Oh. Um, I heard some talks about Blind Guardian. Uh, I don't know what that was all about, but you know, he's he's getting getting up there. How did how did the idea of um, Joachim guesting guest starring on your album come up? It was pretty natural, actually. Uh, we we actually had in mind to make uh, I'm a Viking, you know, the cover song, which mm-hmm. he's on, uh, for, for a bonus track on uh, The Last Stand. Uh, so basically, we, I recorded guitars, uh, arranged it and everything. We talked together about what key to play in, and it was pretty much all set just to, to you know, to lay down the drums and, and all that stuff. But somehow we did, I think we did, uh, the Manor song, or was it Burning Hell by Twisted Sister instead of something? So that song never really got recorded. Yeah. So And then it was kind of natural to just ask him, hey, I'm going to make a cover of this song now. Uh, the time is right. Do you still want to be in? And he was like, yes. <laughs> Are you hoping to do any more songs with any other, any other member from Sabaton? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think... Uh, um, Chris uh, came by a couple of days ago, just before they went off to Australia. We talked about that. I'm, I'm working on a cool project now. Uh, it's going to be a surprise, uh, I can say. And I asked him if he want to join in for a couple of solos and stuff like that. So, And he was like, yeah, hell yeah. I can't wait for that. Uh, it's going to be a... I'm telling you, this next thing is going to be cool. With um, So with your solo albums out now... You're doing exactly what you said you were going to do from when, like, you left Sabaton. Yeah. And what are you hoping for moving forward now? Uh, well, you know, the, the, I'm taking... Actually, even, even though I'm, I'm kind of producing one album each year or something, and people think that, wow, this guy is really creative. It's like I've never had so much time as I have now. Yeah. I feel so because coming from Sabaton into well, I'm I'm living out in the in the woods now, basically. So sitting in my studio here and just you know the days are I I control my time and I do whatever I wish, and it's like I don't have any any goals because if I would aim to become you know bigger, bigger, bigger. Then I would be back in this, you know, the, the, the reason maybe why I had to cut back a little bit and, and mm-hmm. go this way. Yeah. So I'm pretty pretty happy just going slow, uh, choosing the, the shows that I want to do, um, picking the raisins out of the cake and, you know, <laughs> making my music in my studio and going to, to do this and that tour. If it feels good, if it doesn't feel good, I, I'll, I'll skip it and... I'm enjoying life, basically. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Last last year, you and your band played Sabaton Open Air. Mm-hmm. How was it? How was it performing for the first time? Well, not for, not the first time, but like, how was it performing without Sabaton, like, and not playing those songs? Yeah, that was a w- weird situation, actually. Uh, <laughs> and also having the whole band, you know, the Sabaton guys standing. Uh, on the other side of the stage, mm-hmm. backstage, you know, standing there with their arms crossed and, and listening in really critically. Like, uh, 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 and I, I said something funny, I remember. I, uh, and the whole crowd started to cheer. Uh, I said something that one year ago, I stood here on this stage uh, with another guy who couldn't sing either. <laughs> something like that, you know. <laughs> And I looked at Joachim and he was laughing his ass off. So, I mean, that was a, a wonderful, familiar uh, thing, you know, because, you know, we're all friends. We're the best of friends, me and the boys. 
Uh, but it was a little bit weird standing there uh, at Sabaton Open Air, not being in Sabaton, because that's, you know, I've been on that stage together with Sabaton 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So that's uh, five five years in a row. But it was cool. It was really cool. And, and uh, you know, actually, it was a little bit, you know, to, to show the boys, look at this. I, I, I uh, you know, I don't know. I was proud and happy, you know. Yeah. So on their most recent album, The Last Stand, did you, you recorded some guitar for that album, correct? Uh, the Last Stand? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. I, I'm pretty much on every song. Of yeah. course, I was still in the band at the time. So. so now that, I know you're not really doing a lot of touring, but um, yeah. what are the chances of, say, your solo project coming to America? Uh, well, the chances are pretty, pretty good. I, I, I think we, we um, talked about doing a tour over there this year, but I think we have to postpone it maybe to next year. Uh, I definitely want to come come back to America to play because I, I you know, I haven't been. Um, the last tour I think we did with Sabaton was in North America was in fifteen. Yeah. So it's been a while, and I kind of miss the U.S. You know. So we'll see. We'll see next year maybe maybe two thousand and twenty. We'll see. I'm not going to stress anything just for the sake of it, but. Yeah. You know, if we find the right deal and maybe the right band to to support or something, and, or vice versa, you never know. Yeah. No, I'm hoping to catch one of your shows. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and you need to to come. Yeah, because since um, because I I've been listening to I've been listening to Sabaton basically majority of my life, and so to finally hear your new music and even like your old stuff, I just I would really love to hear that stuff live. Yeah, it's it's funny to pick up old songs, you know. Uh-huh. Um, where we actually have been talking about putting in some some old winter long songs into the set, so we'll see about that. All right, well, I'll let you go on with your day, and thank you for doing this. Thank you. Have a nice day. All right, that was the interview with Tho England. Thank you all for listening today. This has been another episode of the Circle Pit. Make sure you tune in next week for a very special Friday the 13th episode. And make sure you subscribe to the Circle Pit on iTunes now. We're on iTunes, so go subscribe, get weekly updates. I'll see you all next week. Stay metal.